<laughs> and I was thinking, oh, how am I going to remember to turn on the camera? Will I get, can I get someone to remind me? And then I was like, I'm looking at notes every day. Just put a big red note. <laughs> so, okay. We're live. Um, we're picking up in Exodus 22. Last week, we talked about Talian Law. So, some concepts about the Talian Law, pulling it all together. Um, it was meant to bring full justice. Um, the important principle about it is, if, if, well, one of the principles. If someone injured someone permanently, that person ought to be fully punished in a way that really hurt. If you cause loss to someone, you owe them restitution. And the more intentional it was, the higher the required restitution. The judge is the one that would determine the level. But if there was no blame that could be placed, no restitution. And for there to be compensation, someone had to be deprived of some kind of, of something by the action of someone else, whether intentional or not. The intentionality mm -hmm. is what made the difference in how big of a restitution. So, Italian law, you know, I think we were raised eye for an eye, tooth for tooth, thinking someone punches you in the face, you punch them back. And that's not what it's about. Mm -hmm. It is about um, punishment fitting the crime. Dwayne, so this is all in in modern law. This is a, called the law of retaliation. In Latin, it's called lex talionis. It means the law of like for like. So in the New Testament, the Pharisees took this law what it, as what it said, meaning they did. If someone cut out your eye, they would cut out your eye. They would do it exactly. Um, they taught that personal revenge was acceptable and expected. If someone punched you, you could punch them back. If they insulted you, they were fair game for your insults. They just didn't get the concept. Then Jesus came along. And he turned it all on his head. Well, actually, he turned it back to the way, the way God had intended it in the first place. They had twisted it all up. And Jesus said, vengeance belongs to God. Turn the other cheek. So he changed it up. Now, we don't have any records of any penalties that we, all those laws we talked about last week and the penalties, we don't have any records of them actually being enforced. Maybe it was such a good deterrent that maybe they didn't have to enforce it. But law is only as good as the enforcement of it. So some other concepts about it. We saw that God values human life above property, including a fetus. These laws communicated um, responsibility for the consequences of your actions. Also applying to actions against animals and animals harming other animals. So you're, and you're also responsible for the indirect consequences of your actions. If a situation was beyond your control, that cleared you of responsibility. If you accepted someone else's items for safekeeping, you were responsible for them. And a, there was a degree of responsibility tied to your prior knowledge of the possibility of something happening. So there's some advantages of this system over what we do nowadays. Um, compensates the victims of the crime directly. Um, and, and immediately. We, we can see in our modern courts things get tied up. 
you may never be compensated. It requires that the offender directly deal with the person that he offended and to face the effects of his crime on the person that he offended. It permits a repentant offender to live a productive life after making restoration. It doesn't require society to pay for housing, food, clothing. They're not putting people in prison. They're putting them to work. Um, if the person couldn't repay, they became an indentured servant and worked off what they owed. So those all seem like pretty positive things. Um, the one thing that didn't work so well is it still favored the rich. If you could pay back whatever you owed, you were out of it. If you couldn't, you became a, an indentured servant. So it still leaned on the, on the side of the rich. So that's what is the Talionis law. Now we'll get into other laws. And I'll start with verse 16 and 17. Can you start that, please? 16? Yeah. If a man seduces a virgin who is not pledged to be married and sleeps with her, he must pay the bride price, and she shall be his wife. If her father absolutely refuses to give her to him, he must still pay the bride price for virgins. Okay. Another name for his bride price is dowry. And our culture, we may have some money some uh, difficulty in understanding a dowry, but it was common for them. So the husband and thee would give the father of the bride a certain amount of money. And um, some saw this as money in case the husband died or divorced the wife and she went back to live with her father. He would have, he would have money. And it would be hard for a father to marry a daughter who had been divorced or widowed. So kind of a, a payment to ensure the girl's future. Um, it was also a way to compensate for the loss of a daughter's services. Because a daughter in a home would work. And you marry her off, you don't have that work anymore. So the dowry was to compensate for that kind of stuff. Now we might think of that as kind of degrading. That they're selling off their daughters. But it was actually a way to place extra value on women. So here in this case, a man is coming, comes and seduces an unmarried girl. Um, the word seduce in Hebrew means to convince by over clever words. <laughs> um, this law is protecting women against seduction. It encouraged um, both men and women to value the virginity of a woman. There were, of course, always men around that would love to seduce girls without responsibility of marriage. I mean, that's a probably since creation thing. Now, there's some people that say this, and this uh, this means that premarital sex is okay as long as you marry the girl after. <laughs> not God, not what God's saying at all. <laughs> not God's plan. Um, no such thing as casual sex in the Bible. Um, both the Old and New Testament say that there are consequences for inappropriate sexual relations. So notice, there is no penalty for the woman, for the girl here. She was thought to be disadvantaged. Now, the penalty for the guy, shotgun marriage. <laughs> but what if he is a really awful guy and you wouldn't want your daughter anywhere near him? Dad could say nope. Um, he could refuse. But the guy still had to pay the dowry because... A nice way to say it. she's damaged goods. 
it'll be harder to marry her. So the concept of, out of all of this for us is God has a plan for marriage. <laughs> and boy, has our society messed it up. It's just getting worse and worse. I mean, it's unbelievable what the, the things I watch the per, about the persecutions of Christians in third world countries and, and even in the military. And yeah. I pray for them because it, I feel like that's the only thing I can do. Although I have to say, military. it has been bad throughout history. I mean, we're facing a different kind of bad. But I was watching a documentary on William the Conqueror, and he was an illegitimate child and of a baron, and they said that was just everybody did that. All, all children of barons were illegitimate. They just didn't get married. So, yeah, we've had a messed up society for a long time. Okay, so now we're going to fit, hit a different kind of law. It's called apodictic. And these are really serious laws. The first three that we're going to hit involve the death penalty. And they involve the death penalty because they involve behaviors that come from paganism. They seem to be kind of random. When you just read it, it's like, why would they stick that in there? But they're all related in the fact that they are trying to gain power, but not from God. You'll notice these go back to the you shall not format um, of the commandments. And these are commands. So, verse 18. You shall not allow a sorceress to live. Okay, so sorcery had, yeah, they had two associations. First, contact with the demonic world, and secondly, that it would, they would uh, deal in drugs. The word sorceress is actually, the um, word is pharmacia, because it was associated with drugs. Um, there was a connection between drug taking and the occult. So, how was this trying to, trying to gain power without God? Through this spirit, through, you know, it, it, it just, they, fo they don't focus on God, they focus on the power that they're giving to have dominion over people and I mean, the more people they have, the more power they have, the more money they have. I mean, it's all self. You know, they, and it's too horrible. That's horrible. Oh, a this, lot of them would go into these states where they would claim they could see the future or have visions, whatever, and then they would have people uh, pay them to have visions on their behalf and stuff. And so they were basically directing themselves where they were gods and all that type of stuff. Yeah. And any god. Yeah. And this means a warlock too, even though it says sorceress. Warlocks were just not as common as sorceresses. So, um, so cultures around them um, differentiated between white witches and black witches. Does our culture differentiate between white witches and black witches? Good, Good witches, witches and bad, and bad witches. witches. Mm -hmm. God doesn't. Witches, oh, no. And it was so serious that they were to be executed. One, one thing that I don't like, and some of my family members do it, and the more I read, the more I see the way our country's going. You know how on Facebook you get a thing that says, oh, pick your birthday mm -hmm. and we'll tell you, you know, if you're going to be rich or how, you know. Yeah. My son, my my youngest son does that a lot. And I tried to tell him that is just wrong. 
well, what's wrong with that? He's, he's exposing himself to, yes. to hackers. Yes. <laughs> Tell him that if he doesn't and, believe anything else. Because there's I, fishing for information when they do those I things. I just go, oh, I wish you would stop. And I pray that he does. That every time I see him post him, I just, I just ignore it. I don't even read it. But I pray for him more because he knows it's, it's wrong. Yeah. When my my nieces were just young, not even teenagers yet, uh, they lived in Montclair, in California, and uh, the, you know how when we were younger, our kids could go and play in the neighborhood and things like that, and their middle daughter got to go into this house down the street where this lady lived and come to find out. She was a white witch, and she was teaching this young girl, of course, so all about being a white witch. And when they finally realized what was going on, you know, of course, they put a stop to it immediately. But uh, you, you just didn't think about those things. Um, but they're there. They're out there. Well, and our, our society makes it look so attractive. Yeah. Think about Bewitched. Yeah. yeah. Think about Harry Potter. Yeah. Um, but what's the difference? They're they're sorcerers. No, no. Oh, I what's mean, the difference? And white and and uh, white are supposed to be calling for nature and um, supposed to be only good, but they're not. The they're still the trying to. Yes. Yeah. Yes. The, oh, right. Yeah. Right. The Wicca yeah. is one that tends to believe they're good witches. But for all of it's idolatry. It is. I mean, you can't. So it'd be pretty easy to remember yeah. that. Not so, served anyone well. <laughs> so for us, the message is stay away from sorcery, right. horoscopes, yes. fortune telling of any kind, palm reading, Ouija boards, yes. astrology. God says no on all of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I hate to say it, but I mean, stiff on people. Stay away from Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. Sorcery. I know there's some movie out. It's called The Shack. Mm -hmm. Don't watch it. Well, it is. So it's a book from. It was. It, it was. Sounds it's like weird. Really, okay. Yeah, it does. When you get yeah, into it, it's, it's yeah, weird. It's not, we yeah. put it on the other day and and uh, and watched it and. Uh, yeah, it's totally against the Bible. I mean, it's yeah. just totally off the but I wall. Think it's, I'm, I'm, I think it's deceptive because yeah. it sounds is, okay. it, 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 almost it's at the end before you realize. Really? Yeah, because yeah, within this, all of a sudden we went, what? This yeah. man loses a child and he's so bitter and he ends up meeting with God, the Father, the Holy Spirit, and One Jesus, one. and they're not right. It's just not right. There, well, <laughs> to begin with, uh, one of the characters is a woman. Right. The Holy Spirit. And, uh, and it's like, okay, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. It's a, well, and it was advertised as a Christian book. Yeah. Really? Well, and well it's and a, it was, they it was now have it as a movie. It's a movie. We yeah, it is. It was on the Christian bestsellers list because yeah. people were. Yeah. 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 So that yeah. means you don't really know what you could read. If yeah. they're saying that something is contrary to the Bible, you can figure it out. Yeah, I mean, it's, and, and it's great that, when, was never when very that you were able, able to see it and easy. say, no, that's wrong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that so to many be people able to deceased. tell people, no, don't watch yes. that. That is totally. Yes. Yeah, so many people were praising right. it. No, it's not. To be my son <laughs> came in one night, he was watching it, and he said, oh, you should see this movie. But you need to watch it, you will like it. Yeah. And, but I'm not sure he watched it all the way through to the really? end because I think he started watching and thought, oh, my mom would like this. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> no, it's about it's God. Christian. It's, it's yeah. And, yeah. You know, the guy went to a Christian college, the author, and lived in Port. I mean, there was good, he had good credentials, but just got off base. Yeah. And then he wrote another one after it, and I can't remember the name of yeah. it. But uh, He rewrote God for yeah, the way he wanted God to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, okay, next one. So, throw away all those horoscopes. Um, verse 19. 
Whoever lies with an animal shall surely be put to death. <laughs> Doesn't that sound gross? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It does. But it was something that they practiced. Because said, don't do that. Um, so how this bypassed God was that the Canaanites and the pagans around them would use it as a fertility practice. They felt that having relations with an animal Can you imagine? would no. get help them get pregnant. No, they didn't. Yes, they did. <laughs> they, they believed it made them more fertile. What? <laughs> yes. So how it's going by trying to bypass God is trying to get pregnant without God's help, by your own help. Among Canaanites, it was pretty common. I mean, it's hard to even imagine. But, and what's amazing is in some European nations today, bestiality is illegal. Whoa! I don't know what countries. There's a subculture that promotes it. Uh-uh. Uh-huh. God says... It's been a long few years for us, the more lenient we get on the definition of marriage, the more lenient mm -hmm. we get on all those sexual practices, then that will be acceptable too. It happens yeah. in America. I mean, it happens in our, not just then, in our culture. And more than, you know, because now they're even trying to legalize um, pedophiles. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. That's, they're not either. Yeah. Yeah. Although, yeah. in some states, it is legal yes. to marry someone younger than the age of 15, as long as you have the parents. Well, well it's not even marriage. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's not even marriage. It's part mm -hmm. of the. What? This was the desire I was born with, so mm -hmm. it should be legal. It's, it's not natural. a marriage thing. God it's gave just, it to me. Yeah. So the more and more we allow any distortion, things like this will become common too. Yeah. God says no. The world says yes. Well, I think people have decided in some place in the culture it says it's okay for individuals to decide what's right for them. Yeah. If it feels good, do it. It's the culture we grew up in. You're right. <laughs> yeah. Okay, verse 20, Betty. Okay. Right here? Mm -hmm. How far? Just 20. Oh, just 20, 20 though. You're on this one. We're in chapter 22. Okay. He who sacrifices to any god other than to the Lord of all shall be utterly destroyed. Okay. That makes sense. That, that makes sense. Yeah. Don't sacrifice to pagan gods. It's, mm -hmm. The way it bypasses God is you're going to a different god. I mean, this one's kind of obvious. Um, all the religions in the ancient world use sacrifices some kind of system. It's just what were you sacrificing? Some of them sacrificed children. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it was horrible how some of these children would be sacrificed. And the Israelites kind of fall into this too. They're not really good at obeying. Um, and the penalty for this was death, but they weren't really good about enforcing it. Um, so, for us, the application, of course, is God is our one God. Our, our idols are, of course, different. We tend not to look to other gods, but we look to things. But God is the one that is the only one that deserves our devotion. When they talked about them not being enforced, wasn't was that part of the reason they were now giving these laws because they weren't enforcing them, or are they talking about these people didn't enforce them? Or they no they pretty much never, no one did. Never really enforced. I mean, they'd have periods of time, probably if if yeah. if you caught your a person doing it and you hated that person you probably helped yeah. make your it was enforced but yeah they weren't really good about enforcing these that's why they fell so easily because again a law is only as good as this enforcement okay now we're hitting a series of laws regarding treatment of the vulnerable um, we're going to see sojourners widows orphans and many of the times when you see any of those terms, you could add, or any unprotected person. God cared about 
those that couldn't care for themselves in some way. There was no government welfare system. The nation of Israel was expected to take care of themselves. They were they were to care for their neighbors and um, it wasn't a government thing, it was take care of each other. Um, it was the responsibility of this covenant community, all of the Israelites, to care for all of their people. Of course, they're traveling, but you didn't see homelessness because they're all living in tents right now. Anyway, there was to be no discrimination against the disadvantaged. They were to be virtual family members. They were all children of God. So, verse 21 first of those. You must not exploit a foreign resident or oppress him since you were foreigners in the land of Egypt. Okay, so these were people that were not, they were not citizens of Israel. They were not considered citizens of Israel. They were considered resident aliens. They couldn't own permanent land. Um, they didn't have the same kind of legal backing and they couldn't be involved in legal matters. Or political matters. A good measure of a society is how you treat the stranger. God commands us to have concern for others. Not not now not getting into the political side of it. People that cross the border. If you come face to face with them, God loves them. We're to care for them. Even though their act may be Illegal, they're still people. Um, so, we're not to um, spit on them or demean them in any way. They're people. And God cares about them. And God says, you were strangers once. You should know how it feels. So, remember how it feels. Verse 22, and 22 through 24. Okay. You must not mistreat any widow or fatherless children. If you do, they, if you do mistreat them, they will no doubt cry out to me, will certainly hear their cry. My anger will burn and I will kill you with the sword. Then you, then your wives will be widows and your children fatherless. Okay, so widows and orphans were the most vulnerable in their society. Um, and God is so serious about the care of them that he says, if you don't take care of them, <laughs> your wives and children will be widows and orphans. Because I'm going to kill you. So our society, we are to care for the orphans and widows. The New Testament reiterates that that we are to care for the orphans and widows. And it, this is another one where, or any vulnerable person in our society, we are to care for them. Verse 25. You shall, oh, wrong chapter. <laughs> if you lend money to any of my people with you who is poor, you shall not be like a money lender to him and you shall not exact interest from him. God has a special heart for the poor. Um, the reason for this particular passage is because if a poor man borrows, they're in, an, they're in need. Um, it's, they see it as assistance to a neighbor. And to take money from someone who is in a need would be immoral. So, you can expect repayment, but no interest. And this, by the way, is Israelite to Israelite. They are not to charge interest. 
Um, so loaning with interest isn't completely forbidden. It's only forbidden if the person is poor. Um, and excessive interest is forbidden. You can't take advantage of someone's misfortune in their society. Okay, verse 26 and 27. If you ever take your neighbor's garment as a pledge, you shall return it to him before the sun goes down, for that is his only covering. It is his garment for his skin. What will he sleep in? And it will be that when he cries to me, I will hear, for I am gracious. So here we see that clothing can be used as collateral. It was a common thing. You could use other things as collateral, but if you were really poor, Maybe the only thing you got is your cloak. Um, so it shows also that loans and repayment and all that were okay, secured with collateral. They weren't expected to be gifts. And it was okay to expect repayment. So they were more worried about he had something at night than he had something during the day. Because it's cold at night. And the cloak um, was their outer garment and it was commonly used as a pillow. So if you were that poor, well, and they were out in the wilderness right now, but even when they get into the promised land, it's what kept them warm, it's what they used as a pillow, it was considered a necessity for survival. So you can't keep something that would help that person survive. So if you were gonna loan someone something and cloak was their collateral by nighttime either it's going to be repaid or you're i don't i don't know if you could take the cloak back the next day or you know, it doesn't it's not clear on that um and and here is in the passage about the widows and orphans god hears their prayers god is god hears everybody's prayers but he has a special ear for, for those in need. For us, it means don't cheat the poor. Be considerate of their needs. Verse 28. Do not blaspheme God or curse the ruler of your people. Okay, so an interesting thing about the word God here. It's Elohim. And there are going to be times we run into where it says, and it means judge rather than God the Father. Um, so this is one of those times where it could mean God the Father or it could mean a judge. My sister years ago, um, I was having one of our long discussions about Mormonism because she's Mormon and she threw a verse at me that talked about gods and making ourselves gods and it just like threw me oh I didn't know about this first um, when I went back and researched it later when it was talking about gods it was really the words mm -hmm. of judges so there are going to be times um, this one may be um, but being that the second part is about nor curse the ruler of your people it could mean be talking about judges uh, now most of the time when it is talking about judges, it's not a capital G. So this is a capital G. Yeah, mine is a capital G. Um, but that could be a translator's thing. Um, so either way, you're not to curse your rulers. God put them there. Now this is tough for us because <laughs> who are our rulers right now? Hard not to not, not to curse them, but God says don't, and we do. And we allow them to be put there. Yeah, God put them there. We may sometimes say, "Why did you do that, God?" But we did. He's got a reason. He's got a reason, and um, we ought to know what it is. Yeah, because we've turned away from. So many people have turned away from yeah. God, and He's telling us. Yeah, and, and we may not agree with with our judges and rulers but we need to pray for them and that includes our employers if you're still working it includes our pastors whoever God puts in leadership over us we need to pray for them 
and not curse them. So, okay, verse 29 and 30. You shall not delay to offer from the fullness of your harvest and from the outflow of your presses. The firstborn of your son shall give, you shall give to me. You shall do the same with your oxen and with your sheep. Seven days it shall be with its mother. On the eighth day you shall give it to me. Okay, a way to honor God is to give him his due. And if we're commanded to give something to God, it's a sin not to give it. Or something that the Pharisees like to do. They like to wait to give it. When God says give something, he means give it now. And their gift was to be the best and the first. <coughs> they were to give promptly without question. Now the firstborn that they were to dedicate to God, their firstborn child, that was one of those laws that was to be started once they got to the promised land. Um, it didn't make a lot of sense to do it in the, in the wilderness while they were there. Um, we're going to run into um, concepts of redemption when we hit chapter 34. Okay, so for us, the concept is we've been set aside for God. We give ourselves to God. We should not delay. He's told us to do it. We need to do it. Verse 31 says, You shall be consecrated to me. Therefore you shall not eat any flesh that is torn by beasts in the field. You shall throw it to the dogs. Basically, no roadkill. <laughs> <laughs> no <ravens. laughs> Um it, This was a command to act differently than the animals. The animals would tear up carcasses and things. God's saying, you're not animals. Be holy. <coughs> Um, not like those animals. It was also obviously not very hygienic to do that, so God was taking care of them um, because these animals were slaughtered in incorrectly. You know, you didn't know what they'd been, what kind of bugs had been eating on them since then, and they might spread disease. So God's taking care of His people. There's a program that that we want that I. I've watched uh, uh, the guys that catch the alligators, you know, uh, in Louisiana. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's one family there that uh, if they see roadkill or whatever, they go out and pick it up and take it. And uh, a matter of fact, on the program just last week, uh, he was walking down the street and, or down the road and uh, he picked up something that had been killed along the side of the road and t turned around, went back home, and invited all of his neighbors over to eat with them. <laughs> oh, it wasn't for the alligators, it was for himself? It's it's more common than you think in the South. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, and of course, we have ways to be more hygienic about it, although in some places in the South, maybe not so much. <laughs> um, God's, for them, it was definitely... There, they didn't have all the ways to really clean the animals, and and God would, God would tell them it. This is unclean. Mm -hmm. Anything unclean, they were not to. Keep. Well, you know, it says it's that it's torn by the beast. And if you've ever watched pictures from Africa, the the nature yeah. ones where the lions go, yeah. you know, and tear and everything, it you just you don't want to do that. Yeah, you don't want it. And the underlying reason for all this is to be set apart for God to be better than the animals. Mm -hmm. So that ended that chapter. And now we're going to go back to more apodictic laws, the more you shall not laws. Um, these all have talk about um, truth regardless of a person's status. So the first three verses are tied to the ninth commandment. So verse, verse 1. In chapter 23. Back to you. Do not spread false reports. Do not help a guilty. Do not help a guilty person by being a malicious witness. Mm -hmm. Okay, so beyond 
just gossiping. This is this is saying don't gossip, but beyond that, don't allow a false report to go on. If you hear someone giving a false report, stop it. Don't allow it to circulate. Um, the inventor of the false report and the person that passed it on, equally guilty, but the person that sat by and watched it go and didn't say anything, guilty too. It's okay to ask for proof from the person doing the reporting. Um, in the Bible, two or three witnesses are required to verify something. I know I've had times where people will come tell me something, and I said, did you talk to that person? <laughs> you, know, you need to go talk to them, not me. Um, we have to really, it's, it's so easy and sometimes so fun to gossip, but it's so wrong. Um, so it's something we should not be doing. Well, God says, don't do it. When he says shall not, it's stronger than shall not. And in English, shall is a very passive word. But in Hebrew, it's not passive at all. Because when we see shall, it's like, shall I or shall, shall I not? It's, it's more like here, this is you don't, will not. Don't do it. So don't shall. Put that shall. Yeah. Okay, verse 2. You shall not follow a multitude of doing in doing evil, no shall you testify in a dispute so as to turn aside after a multitude or under to pervert justice. So this is and about order. crowds. It's so easy to get into crowd think. Um, it takes courage to stand up to the crowd. It I think back to the Rodney King right. Thing. Yeah. I, I was in Southern California at the at the time. Scariest thing ever, because all these good people were pulled into doing wrong, um, rioting and looting stores and burning cars and, and um, what like watch doing? riot. Yeah, yeah. I was I was much then. younger then, but yeah, I remember those two. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. yeah. yeah. <laughs> but. <laughs> yeah, those are getting pulled into, maybe they weren't that good of people because they did get pulled in, but they would never think of doing that kind of mm -hmm. stuff, but get pulled into the crowd because everybody's doing it. It's okay. It's not okay. God says, oh, it's, it's, if it's, been wrong, it's wrong, it's happening today. Oh, yeah, it happens. All oh, those mob, whatever they call them, the mobs that go yeah. into stores or mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah. It's in our nature to want to be accepted by others. So if everybody's saying, come on, let's go do this. It's, it's, Everybody's doing it, then we can do it too. Yeah, peer pressure can be so strong. <coughs> but when God says no, God means no. It's important to pick your crowd carefully. By being here at church, you're, you of course cho have chosen what we hope is a good crowd. Mm -hmm. um, 1 Corinthians 15.33 says, Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. Mm -hmm. But peer pressure from the right people is a good thing. And hopefully church is where you get that good peer pressure. A guy named Morgan said, The history of all right movements has been in the first place the history of lonely souls who, having heard the authentic voice of God, have stood alone or in small minorities. Sometimes you're alone when you're standing for right. Mm -hmm. Okay, verse 3. Nor mm -hmm. shall you be partial to a poor man in his dispute. Okay, so we saw that God really cares about the poor. But justice is justice. He doesn't say lean on the side of the poor in a lawsuit just because they're poor. Mm -hmm. Look at what the case is. Don't favor them over the rich. 
justice needs to be truly blind. Um, for us, it means we need to look at things without being biased one way or another. Um, we can't blame our parents for our, our actions. Um, yeah, it might be hard to break away from a generational cycle, but we are responsible. Um, my son-in-law has a doozy of a family. Just a doozy of a family. And um, my favorite member of his family is the one that was in prison and used to slam him up against walls and everything else. He's my favorite member of the family because <laughs> he's changed some. Um, but Sean decided he was not going to follow the rest of his family. And he's I so admire him for it because he he was different. Um, so we can do the same thing. Okay, verse four and five. Oh, okay. How far? Four and five. Four and five. If you meet your enemy's ox or his donkey wandering away, you shall surely return it to him. If you see the donkey of one who hates you lying helpless under its load, you shall refrain from leaving it to him. You shall surely release it with him. Okay. It's easy if you see your friend's donkey laying there. Or you, of course, you're going to pick it up. But what if it's your enemies? Mm -hmm. And God doesn't just say, "Don't do, don't do anything to the donkey, don't do anything bad." He says, "Go take care of that donkey. Go take it to your enemy. Don't, don't even just walk by." Well, and, and it says it. you'll rescue it with him, so you need cooperation yeah. with the person. Yeah. Um, notice verse 5 flips it to someone who hates you. Mm -hmm. Now, your enemy is one thing, but someone that hates you, that can be kind of scary. Um, Later, rabbis are going to take this and say, you have an obligation, well, take some verses and say, you have an obligation to hate your enemy. <laughs> what? You have an obligation to hate your enemy. Okay. <laughs> then Jesus came along. Love your enemy. Yeah. Yeah. But then, then, but then you think about this verse, too, is, is telling you, uh, that poor donkey did nothing to you. Yeah. That poor donkey can't help itself. And it, and God loves the donkey just as much as he loves the people. So you got to put your hatred aside for the for the animal itself yeah. also. So the concept for us is it doesn't matter how we feel about someone right is right. Yeah. Right wrong is wrong and how we behave to them um, it, we need to take care of their nation needed to take care of each other mm -hmm. we need to take care of each other and you might make a friend out of that hatred you might just turn yourself around yeah. turn him around yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, so God is God is really wanting these people to care for each other right. and take care of each other. There's not really a lot of room for them to hate each other because they're going to be facing a lot of enemies. Okay, verse 6 through 8. You must not deny justice to the poor among you in his lawsuit. Stay far away from the false accusation. Do not kill the innocent and unjust because I will not justify the guilty. You must not take a bribe, for a bribe blinds the clear-sighted and corrupts the words of the righteous. You must not oppress. You said to nine, oh. right? No, to eight. To eight. Okay. Eight. okay, I might have said nine, but I meant eight. <laughs> okay, so again, don't make the law toward the poor. Don't make laws that um, raise the poor over the rich. Everybody's on equal ground. Yeah. 
didn't being poor didn't make you right in the legal legal sense, but it didn't make you wrong either. Um, so then he talks about the truth and um, God saw how they twisted the truth to pervert justice in their society. They, it, it happens. It's always happened, always well, and God says, don't do that. The truth is required. Um, he warns them, be really careful before declaring a death sentence because God knows the truth. Don't just um, find someone guilty because you don't like them. It better be a rock-solid case. Um, but if they let the guilty one go free, don't worry, God will punish them. Um, but they are to try, they are to do everything in their power to dispense justice the right way. Um, then he talks about bribery. Bribery was, we've mentioned this before, bribery was so common. Um, and God says, not my people. No bribery here. You're to be different you're to be just and look at cases on their merit not because someone paid you something or gave you something verse 9 you must not oppress the, a resident alien you yourselves know how it feels to be a resident alien because you were a resident alien in the land of Egypt. Okay, so we, we've kind of talked about this. Um, how, how can we apply this to us today? Um, think about um, how you can bless strangers visitors to church. Remember the first time you came to church here? Um, yep. How nervous you might have been? Yep. We can help other people experiencing that. Look for the stranger in church and reach out. Except when you you go over and say, hi, are you, uh, is this your first time? No, I've been coming for about three months. <laughs> like, oh my God. Yeah, I've been hit, I've been hit with that a lot too. But. <laughs> Best ways to say, I don't think I've met you yet. Yeah, my think, name is. Yeah, yeah. Right. I, mean, I think that's and what that, I've, I've said. That, that like, would be a hate And that's the truth. Yeah. <laughs> but sometimes it's hard to remember that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that you haven't done it three times already before. <laughs> yeah. But beyond that, this goes to those strangers that we meet in our lives, uh, which is a tough one for me because I hide behind being shy <laughs> and reaching out. But God's, God doesn't say, unless you're shy. Mm -hmm. But you know, I can say when I, I'm probably the one who's been here the shortest amount of time. When I first came here I was very welcome. I mean I felt really good. That's why I came back. You guys are really good about welcoming people. It felt like I wanted to come back. And I'm really glad for that. Now if someone walked in with a bunch of tattoos all over, and piercings all over their face, would we react the same way? Well, yeah, you go up. You try to be nice and <laughs> overlook it. And yeah. I want to tell you this story. You know, I don't know if, it, if you've ever heard Lucy Swindell talk or read any of her material or anything. When she was at a Women of Faith way back, when uh, they were all going to that, I, I, I loved going to the Women of Faith things they had in, in Las Vegas. 
she got up and she talked and she said, I'm going to tell you a story about this guy that came in at a grocery store. He was standing in line, you know, he was calm and everything, but he had tattoos, the whole leather thing and everything. And she said, but he was really a big teddy bear. <laughs> the person in front of him couldn't, didn't have all the money to pay. And he says, when the girl says, well, you're just gonna have to take something off that you really don't need. And the girl said, but I need it all. And when he heard that, he spoke and said, I'll pay her bill. And then some. And whatever, he, he gave her money also, so she could, I thought, whoa. Mm -hmm. I never looked at someone with tattoos like that before, and that was way back then. And so now I just go, oh, why did they do that to their body? It's probably, some of them are some of the yeah. nicest people you could be. Yeah, yeah. We, wonder, we wonder, but. Because there are the bikers who do Samaritan shoe boxes. Mm -hmm. There are bikers okay. who go to. Bikers for prayer. Thank you. Yes, for yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. That just fit in yeah. anyway. It's just. Or says that with Lucy's window. I mean, and she had a way of making it come for you, too. You know, she's really a neat and lady. We tend to judge people with our eyes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And not looking at their heart. Yeah. And not looking them at, at them the way God looks at them. And that's where we fail. Okay, next one. Verses 10 and 11. Yes. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Okay, we'll, this is we'll a hold a break. Yeah, we'll take a break there. Yeah, we'll take a break there. Let's start at verse 10 next week. So, okay. Um, prayer request update on Cassidy. She is doing better. She's still in pain. She will be all her life. Um, they have decided she has what's called functional neuro neurology disorder, mm -hmm. meaning her brain just fires these pain sensors where there is no nothing happening in her body. So she will just have that there. Um, teaching her pain management, um, have muscle relaxants when it's when it's really hard. And, I am sorry. Yeah, is, is this your granddaughter? Granddaughter. Oh, I'm sorry. And in the meantime her family have decided that they're gonna come back to St. George. My oh, son -in -law. You think they are for sure? My son in law already put the stuff in to go back to Sky West. It's a process. But one of the one of the managers already called him and said, I heard you're coming back. But there's still a process. He has to reapply and go through drug tests and things. But and then it'll be a it'll be an interesting family situation because they're in the lease there, so my daughter's gonna stay there and kids on and off and they'll be coming out here for a couple weeks so Wow. Well, it'll be it'll be interesting. But that's has has anybody heard what's going on with Kathy yeah. Sylvester? No, yeah. I all I heard was that we need to pray for her, but I don't yeah, know what. Yeah, but nobody knew why. Yeah. Um, um, John's mom yeah. surgery went really well. She ended up having um, another tear or something that was found was during the surgery. So that was a a great thing that that was discovered at the same time and. Um, yeah, everything seems to be doing really well. So thank you for praying for her. And my um, friend's daughter is still missing. Oh, oh boy. Yeah. So it's been it's September and the Honda Bay area. She was last seen in, um, San, in South San Jose. Was How old is she? She's only 15. What? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Pamela's not here because she's been having problems with nausea. She's getting some over-the-counter medications today that hopefully help with that. Brenda ha is going to have to have shoulder replacement surgery. Who's that? I didn't hear that. Brenda. 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 Oh. Um, Janice, your friend Irma was diagnosed with a rare liver cancer. And she's meeting with the oncologist this week. Thank you. I missed that. Mm -hmm. The lady that is a maintenance person that stuck with. Um, my brother in law is a praise the Lord. And my sister called me and told me I was just 
praising the Lord, the allegiance that he had, just, they went in, they were all ready to do surgery, to take one out to see if it was cancerous. They closed him back up. And he says, there is nothing there. We don't know what it is. So they did a whole, ran a whole bunch more tests. They found out it is some great big long name, and I can't pronounce it, but it's a praise of the Lord. God killed him. And he is already giving him antibiotics, and he's feeling better already. Yeah, my son has a, a growth on his elbow, and they thought it was a cyst, and he went in to have it uh, removed, and it's not a cyst. Uh, so they're sending him to a surgeon to see if what they can do for his elbow with this growth on it. Okay. Okay. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that we can come together and study your word. Lord, some of these laws seem so specific and maybe not for us, but they're, they're all about you showing love, you caring for us, that we need to care for our community. We need to care for each other here within the church. Lord, and we thank you for the love that you have for us. Lord, we lift up each of these prayer requests. We thank you for the praises. We pray that we would continue to lift them up during the week. Lord, we pray for today's service, another special service with the Lord's Supper. We pray for Clyde as he'll be leading that. And we thank you again for your love. We pray this all in your holy name. Amen. 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 Yeah. Oh, no.